from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Back here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com as well as mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt, two places where you're listening, as well as on the MixLR feed. You can search Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora and you're watching on Facebook Live, facebook.com backslash live now DT. I could not be more honored, more privileged to have this gentleman on the show. He's somebody I got to spend a lot of time with. We talked, you know, when he was on the field, off the field, uh, did it, you know, did a show or two together, had some fun with that. He came and helped me out, actually worked with my company with Dan Tortora Broadcast Media for a little bit and helped me out with one of our live events that we did. So, you know, we've connected in so many realms of the world and uh, really, in all honesty, I appreciate him because he's he's been a good friend. He's He's been there for me. He's somebody that uh, I believe trusts me. I trust him and it goes so much farther than football. So it's it's an honor and a privilege to always have him on the broadcast, but really more importantly to shoot him a text message and get one back and, and just see how he's doing. So with that being said, it is uh, truly, truly an awesome day when you can welcome this uh, this man onto your show. And that is Adonis Amin Moore. We're live here inside of the Charney's Menswear and Tuxedo Studios and former Syracuse running back is with us. Adonis, how you doing today? I'm good, Dan, man. Hanging in there. I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well, man, and uh, it, you know, and I, I gotta. I mean, I know you just heard me say it, but I gotta thank you for just you know being somebody who's who's always been there and been positive. You know, spread that positivity, and you know, always been in my corner, and you know, been a man of your word. So you know, I think that that's something that's not always easy to find in this world. So I want to say thank you again for that. Oh yeah, Dan, I, mean, I appreciate you as well, man. Uh, you helped me out for this one. I was. Finished playing something I did my whole life, and I was trying to create, go walk onto that next journey of life, and try to figure things out. And you were there to help me, so I appreciate that. I mean, I think we're both fans of each other. You know what I mean? Um, I respect everything that you do. You know, it's, it's hard to run your own thing and be able to be your own boss. And some people, a lot of people want that, but it's hard to actually make that happen for ourselves, especially when you had a position with working with like ESPN and stuff like that, and the Daily Orange, and we're able to. It would be successful, but then you want your own success and you're still able to make it happen. So, you know, I definitely appreciate you as well. Well, definitely happy to have you here on the show. Once again, we're here with Adonis Amin Moore. You can see him right on the corner here of, of what's popping, and you also see some pictures of Adonis and, and you know him on the field as well as uh, interviews that we've done and whatnot. So, Adonis, you know, you and I were talking about it off the air, and I, I didn't want to cut you off, but I wanted you to be able to share it to the people here. So just what you've been doing since football and, and just what's been – going on i mean kind of bring people through you end at syracuse and then what the trail was to get to where you are today because i think it's a pretty amazing story and and i'm excited for you to tell it so i'm going to kind of just open the door for that yeah for sure um so starting with the end, <clears throat> end with syracuse uh which are my i never will forget i love my times up in upstate new york and syracuse uh, my son is actually born from there and um, i tell him that all the time he's my orange i call him a orange baby Oh, my Syracuse baby. Um, so he finds a kick out of that. He haven't really, he's starting to understand exactly who the Warriors are and who we root for and things like that. Um, I definitely can't wait to get a chance to get him back up there. I went out back in my own, my own self last summer. But, um, so, you know, my career with Syracuse was fun. Had, uh, had a, had a, had an opportunity to be coached by uh, Coach Doug Marone's, uh, Coach of Year, Year Squad right now. I don't know how you said it, so I told you it was four keep that alone. But um, <laughs> then uh, we had Coach, Coach Scott Schaefer take over when Coach Ronald left the field. And I was, you know, it was an up and down career, but I would never take it away from it. Um, the friendships and bonds that I, I, I grew and created from that experience, I, I, I would love. Um, I'm, a, I'm an orange man. I'm an orange to the day I die. I wear shoes all the time out here. I'm not back home in my home in uh, Denver, Colorado. Um, so people see it all the time on me. Some of my cars, some of my license plates. So they, you know, I'm a horn steward and through regardless of whatever happened. And uh, so just finishing, finishing our senior year like we did, it was definitely not a, a way we want 
love to go when we was on the pace. We were trying to be in that place of trying to be consistent and went to two ball games my sophomore and junior year. And then my senior year ended up falling off. And then um, from there, you know, I just, I had a son. I had a son in my junior year, so I kind of always had him. Obviously, was my main focal point of trying to ride for him. So when it came down to trying to go on to the NFL and things like that, I kind of didn't probably take it as serious as I should. I kind of felt through my career that I had seriously that was so up and down. I don't think there was a want, I feel like, for me. So in my head, I had that. Um, that notion, it wasn't, it wasn't actually true. I had a lot of teams that was coming after me and agents coming after me, but instead at the same time as Dan. I say I was 22 years old at the time, but I mean, still young and just kind of naive things and didn't kind of go for I kind of wanted to move forward with provider. I wanted to, I was thinking more so about provider for my son at that time. I had him at the end of the day, so. Um, from there, I kind of started working with you and then did that. Um, working with stuff from my degree a little bit more. And then I kind of got um, hooked up with his uh, family uh, of agencies with uh, a very strong human service organization and did some some great work out there after I finished school and uh, started working for them about like 10 months before I moved back back home to Colorado. But uh, yeah, I had some great times up there in Syracuse for sure. Yeah, you know, and, and, and you talk about, you know, the fact that, you know, that your career was, was up and down and you and I had discussed it when, you know, when a new staff comes in, you know, sometimes they want their guys and you were the guy that, that came in under a, a different staff and, and Coach Wheatley and whatnot. And, and then <clears throat> when the new staff came in under Schaefer, there was some changes <clears throat> to the backfield and, you know, some questions about who was in and who was not in and why were they in and, and whatnot. And just, I mean, how did you navigate through that? Because I know that that was tough for you. I know it was frustrating. You know, you went from being a guy that, that they would use in kind of, you know, sneak situations by the goal line, kind of throw people off by the goal line. Then you were the guy to, to run the clock down. Then sometimes they would put you in the game and keep you in the game. And then other times people would say, you know, is, is Adonis injured because I haven't seen him out there in three weeks. So, how did you navigate through all of that? Because sometimes you were used, sometimes you weren't, but there was always the question of why. Yeah, you know, it was uh, it was difficult just knowing that I had the ability to be on the field, and um, you know, uh, I messed up my own opportunities sometimes. I feel like as well, it wasn't always just the coach's fault. Um, but that was before they came back to uh, with Coach Marone and that that kind of staff. I mean, they were so professional. Uh, any mistake you made on that field, it was uh, it was remembered, and um, you always it was always a fight to uh, try to gain that trust back. We had we had a veteran quarterback around that, so they had a lot of trust in, and we all had a lot of trust in. And um, you know, I think we all kind of went through that battle. Those guys were back there with Rome, myself, Ty, especially when I uh, working with Coach Rome and them. Uh, they were very particular about everything, and it, it was awesome. We, we, we learned a lot. We learned a lot from Coach Schaefer as well. Um, and then when Coach Schaefer came in. It was just a completely different situation. Uh, the offense changed. That was I wasn't that kind of an air raid kind of throwing. But even though we ran the ball pretty often, but we more shifted to that more standard of the um, staying in the uh, shotgun and doing things like that. And also, although I felt I could still compete and perform at that level, I mean, in that kind of position, uh, some things just went up and down. And it's just you know, at the end of the day, it's the coach's call. Um, we have to go from where we have to go. And at that time, I just I had an ad, and I already created a bond with uh, with those men that I worked I worked with and played with and trained with and went to school with and hung out with and everything. So um, I didn't want to leave. I, I love Syracuse. I had Mr. Uh, Floyd Little, who was a guy who was a, a strong advocate for me, who uh, stayed in my ears throughout my four years there. And uh, um, I, I, pre- I appreciate guys like him and appreciate guys like you, like yourself, that always – raise that question of where is he at? Why isn't he playing? And why aren't you guys giving us a well, you know, things like that. And uh, so I, that's kind of one thing that kind of made me love and stay there. I was a loyal, I'm a loyal person. Every school I went to, I started, started there and finished. So I wasn't going to create some type of change now that maybe one part of my life wasn't going exactly correct. The school was going good. So I met a person that I'm still currently with. We both started to scratch. Um, we have a beautiful son and a beautiful daughter. So it was a lot of things that my, my point that my, one of my main reasons going to school was football. And 50% of that didn't go out the best way, but the other 50 did. So, and 
I was able to create and do something different from there. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a challenge. I came from a, a very competitive um, high school. Um, we had a, we put out a lot of D1 guys, especially around the time I was going there. I was going three state championships. Um, through the top in the four years I was there. So that competitive spirit was always in me, always do. You know, you could, uh, you had somebody in your background or just fight behind you or you're behind somebody and you had to compete and try to play. So I think that's one thing that I think that you my head up and as well as my parents. Uh, they always fuck with me and my family and things like that. So it wasn't, the most difficult part would be when it came Saturday and it, sometimes it might just not happen all might not come in your court. And it's just to swallow that and just try to be a great teammate and come back the next week and just try to be ready and just stay ready. So I think that's where Tyler kind of come from. It's just my background of what I've been around and what I'm kind of used to, I think. That coming from Adonis Amin Moore, a former Syracuse running back, speaking us speaking with us here this morning on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Charney's Menswear and Tuxedo Studios. And, you know, Adonis, you know, for you, you, you've you've done so much. You've come so far. Like you said, you know, there's the question was raised of of why aren't you out there, and you know, and the toughness of going back and forth and whatnot. What did you take away from from uh, from Doug Marone? Because that, I mean, I guess Marone and Wheatley. Be, and and the interesting thing about it is that I had Doug Marone at Syracuse when I came back to Syracuse from Orlando, and then Doug ended up going to the Bills, but then eventually to the Jaguars. So now I have Doug with Jacksonville, and Wheatley used to be with the Jaguars originally. He's not anymore, but he was. So I had him there all the way up to last season. So, I mean, what just what you can say about Coach Wheatley and Coach Marone, because they're still somewhere in some way involved in my life, or, or, or they have been involved in, in my, my realm, I should say, and they were obviously involved in, bring, in bringing you in. Yeah, I mean, um, they were some great, some great men, um, some great men to learn from. Football-wise, and it's just been a man. You know what I mean? Um, I can't say enough about them. My main reason I went there was uh, because because of those guys. They were great coaches. They were they were very knowledgeable about ins and outs of football, and they could teach. They taught me a lot through those two years I was there. Um, I learned a lot from those guys. So I appreciate them a lot. Um, I wish they could have stayed, but of course, everybody has their own things that they want to do and accomplish in life and the goals in their life. And, Sometimes God gives us all these opportunities, and we, yeah. Sometimes we have to take heed to them, man. So I mean, I can't say enough. I learned, I learned so much from. Them. And my biggest thing, I feel like, uh, which I think Coach Rose, a lot of his goal was just was being professional, being functional, and being a man with a lot of things outside of football that Coach Rose held us accountable for. And not Coach Scott Shepard did the same thing. He was falling over, but we are a lot of us in that time, that transition time, probably point a lot of it to Coach Chick, Coach Rose, just because. He was the one that kind of built that groundwork. Because Scott said Coach Scott Central was right there with him through that whole time. So he kind of knew exactly kind of the, the same kind of thing. And he, we kept kind of the same league on, things like that. So. But Coach Marone, and uh, I just say punctuality, uh, being professional, um, being prepared to all phases of it, of the game, and outside, even preparing this child out of my life. And I bring all these same things to a professional career now. So, yeah, I learned, I learned a lot from those guys. Yeah, no, absolutely, and, and and taking a lot away from you know that coaching staff and your experience there, and and your time with Syracuse, and and now just to kind of share with everybody where you're at and and what you're doing, because you and I spoke about that a little bit. And I know you told your story, uh, you know, somewhat here from Syracuse and, and moving on and whatnot, but just what you can say about where you're at now and, and what you're doing now in your professional realm, and and you know, kind of how the family's doing and all that. Yeah. I'm- so now I'm definitely a professional daddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have the two kids, uh, so we. I have definitely one of my main goals that we have. When I left Syracuse, kind of just working with kids and working in human services, kind of got into education. One, to, um, being that guy, that guy that was kind of like that coach and that teacher, and and the schools a lot. So I kind of I started doing that. Uh, ended up going to my home, one of my uh, the same public school system that I came from. Worked there a little bit, and uh, I was able to find a coaching job in, the, in that area that I was, I don't want to say that I liked, because I, um, I, I love all the schools down there, but I didn't play high school there, so it kind of was a little different for me. So I coached my little, uh, coached little, little, little league, and then 
kind of wanted to get changed a little bit again, and I kind of missed the activity and this and that. I think that's just that camaraderie when you when you went to go. So I kind of got in law enforcement, and I've been doing that, man, and I love it, absolutely. I absolutely love it. Um, so I'm a Jeff, uh, Jefferson County Deputy Sheriff out here in Denver, Colorado, which is just a suburb of Colorado, about like a second. Rogers, Colorado, to Denver, uh, right by Denver. So I'm um, doing this, been doing this for about uh, a year and a half now, and I absolutely love it. And for you, you know, like you said, helping kids out and being there for kids and caring for kids, obviously your own and then outside of your own, where does that passion come from for you? And then, you know, kind of going hand in hand with it, the passion for law enforcement and and making sure that, you know, people are safe and and, and people are obviously doing good things in the community. Yeah, I think that um, that passion just, I think for service, I think comes just from a background. My mother was uh, very sickly. Growing up, I had to see her go through a lot of things and uh, a lot of life-altering changes. And I think that kind of gave me that, just helping her and my dad with everything and just seeing how strong my dad was with her and anything he needed, the service he kind of gave her. I mean, it was their partnership. But it's, at the end of the day, it's you helping somebody. So I think that kind of, the spirit for that always was in me. I, went on, I did a lot of volunteer work growing up before. Um, I did a lot of volunteer work at Syracuse. The Building Man program. Yeah. We have a Syracuse University. Uh, so I did a um, just that volunteer thing. I kind of the service. I've always had a passion for that. So I kind of just I think I just went forward with it. Just my my special program to kind of just link in that connection to people. I think it's something that I I thrive on. You know, I love like meet me and you can a connection to things like that. So it's just something I love to do. It's awesome. It's a, a great opportunity, and especially now with law enforcement, is uh, a great opportunity to. Just, uh, serve the communities that I live in, serve the people that can serve themselves, um, and just just having the opportunity to do that, and, um, and it's just great, it's fun, um, my job now is a little more, obviously, a little more dangerous, yeah. but uh, at the same time, it's, it's more, you get more loving and appreciation from more than the hate that is out there and things like that, so it's something that I, I still in love with, and I, I'm just continually growing in the career. And uh, having a good time. And, you know, speaking here with Adonis Amin Moore, former Syracuse running back and, and a friend of mine, uh, more importantly, here as we speak this morning from the Charney's Men's Wearing Tuxedo Studios on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Uh, Adonis, what can you say about, you know, I mean, obviously law enforcement, equal rights, you know, equality, treating people with respect, treating each human being, regardless of background, color, gender, sexual orientation, whatever it may be, the same. How are you navigating that in law enforcement, knowing that, you know, you're an African-American man. We know that there's been some inequality. We know that there's been violence. We know that there's been injustice. How do you balance that? Because I'm sure that, you know, that's come up in conversations with family. I'm sure it's come up in life in general. Just what you could say about the climate that's out there right now. Yeah, you know, it's just something I've, I've seen firsthand. My dad has worked hand in hand with law enforcement. Not in law enforcement, exactly, but worked hand in hand with law enforcement. I've had cousins who've been in law enforcement. So, seeing it firsthand growing up and then just knowing that it's just something that I want to do, it's uh, it's a lot of negativity towards it. There's a lot of negativity towards a lot of different things. You know what I mean? So, it's just something I just kind of learned to just be adversarial towards and just, and this is something that I want to do. This is something. The change I would like to create, if there's a change you want to create, you kind of get, i got to be a part of it. So that's kind of my thing with that. And just giving people different perspectives on different situations. Um, sometimes there is things that happen, unfortunately, to my community. And it's, it's definitely unfortunate. And there's definitely it's bad people ever. There's bad cops. But there's a lot of great ones out there as well. You know what I mean? It just comes with everything. And unfortunately, we just have the ability to take a person's life. And unfortunately, it happens too often more than none. And that's what... um. A lot of people are trying to bring light to and talk about that. And it's just something that I, I think it's thing I say, I, I try to create a different perspective on, on, on things. And uh, that's how I feel like it's the best way to help me navigate through it. Um, I'm somebody who can, I feel like I'm, I'm a listener. I don't know if I am. I feel like I am. Yeah. So I, when people are able to listen to me and I go into them back, it kind of help, helps run in our small and that gap. Um, I'm definitely, I'm a very small scale. So I think I'm too. People continue to just kind of learn from each other and we'll, we'll figure it out from there. And uh, so, 
Yeah, just navigating through it, I feel like it's just being open. And that means being open and communicating how my family feel about things and being open to listen to me. But my tribe, I feel like they're my biggest tool to help me navigate through it. And even through the negativity and that, people, everybody has their opinion. And at the end of the day, you're entitled to that. And that's how you feel, but I just, sometimes I have, I'm entitled to mine as well, so. Right. You know, and, and that's that's the world we live in today is that we have to be OK that people have different opinions and different thoughts. And, and you know, I mean, we all we all kind of I mean, I think that the best room is the room where a bunch of people disagree and then they can shake hands afterwards, laugh and say, you know, I appreciate your point or I appreciate the conversation. And then they go get lunch together. I don't think the best room is a room where everybody agrees. I think the best room is where people disagree and then find some type of common ground. Right, exactly, and it's like like a trust thing, and that's yeah. that's the biggest uh, thing I saw like is is lacking between my community, my my natural born community, having being black and African American and American, the lack of trust with law enforcement and law enforcement, the lack of trust on each other. So it just comes from there's a lot of more history things that is not going to get solved in one day. Yeah, um, it's just about, the biggest thing is just to try to preserve life. I think it's the more meaningful idea of everything is that we would like to preserve life and I feel like that's the most impact that you know, people should try to vote for something. But yeah, I think once you are like, able to gain this trust we gain trust, man, I think it will change a lot of a lot of different things. Well what do they say? Trust and communication are the things that build relationships, so Exactly. So um yeah, yeah it's um it's, it's, it's just interesting. They actually been reading about just some different departments that are actually have Try to move towards that era, more interactive and getting police out of cars and having them walk to communities like what you see in the olden days and stuff like that. I think things like that are powerful because you start to learn and understand each other a little bit more rather than, you know, just being in a car, pulling somebody over and things like that. Stuff like, you know, so some, and it's been a law person, you kind of, we're always on our P's and Q's, so it's always, you don't know what type of situation it is. So uh, I think stuff like that where, People will be out in the community, kind of remember faces, and they're remembering you. Kind of helps build that relationship and build that trust for sure. That communication. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think to have you know law enforcement out in the community speaking and shaking hands and talking is is you know something that would be huge because if you know the face that you know is is going to be at the at the local store, you know that this you know this is the beat cop, this is the cop that's going to be in the neighborhood. You know, then you get a sense of who they are, what do they stand for, because the reality of it all is you can't hide who you are. You know, some people think that they can, but you can't hide who you are. So if there's something wrong or there's something off, putting them out in the community and, and getting to see how they respond to that community is going to show you, you know, what their attitude is toward people and, and toward people of a certain background or, you know, a certain community. If the trust is there, if it's not there. So, you know, I just I feel like having an open door policy and really having law enforcement, like you said, know the people, the people know law enforcement, then, you know, create that respectful, but create that bridge of, you know, who is this person? What do they stand for? What are they about? Because, you know, people show, people always eventually show their true colors. And if someone's good, they'll be good. And if they're not, then they won't be. And we'll see that. So I think it's just about vetting, you know, vetting it through to the best of our ability and then getting them in the community and getting them to see that, you know, pulling somebody over is, is you know, there could be a lot, a million different things that happen in that situation. So there has to be a level of trust on both sides. or Because if there's not, that's, you know, unfortunately where we see some violence. Right, exactly, for sure. 100%. 100% I can agree with you even more. So that's... Yeah, so, um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> No, no, I would say, yeah, I, I agree with you 110 percent, really. That coming from uh, Adonis Amin Moore this morning, and and uh, in in our law enforcement, I do want to let you know that a guy who is no stranger to the broadcast, who I also very much appreciate, is uh, Mr. Croom, who just put my guy AD. So uh, Eric Croom was showing you some love this morning. Oh yeah, that's my guy, man. He Croom, you know all those guys, man. A lot of them. We all still communicate. We all talk a lot. Um, actually, when Jay Furnaberger was a wide receiver at uh, Arkansas transfer, um, we just uh, celebrated our birthdays. He came out here and we celebrated our birthdays together. 
I know Boone got a birthday coming up pretty soon here. But it was either like the day after, the day before my dad's birthday, so it was all easy for me to remember that much. But uh, yeah, man, it's, those are these little, those lifelong relationships and bonds and friendships that, that I was able to create out there in Syracuse. And me and Cruz actually go back um, a while long, but even before Syracuse, so uh, that's, that's one of my guys for sure. <laughs> yeah, he had a. Uh... He, oh, I, I like this, what Kroom just said, because I am a, I'm a fellow one. He put Libra season, and I am also a Libra. So, so Yeah, for sure, exactly. We're all Libras, for sure. That's so, all we all get along, I think. <laughs> so, when is, so when's your birthday, and when's Quinte's birthday? Mine's uh, the first Quinte's is the th- uh, September 30th. So today is September 30th. Yours is when? October 1st. Okay, so you're the same day as my buddy Ross. So, so Quince, so Quince, okay. so Quince is the 30th. Ross is the first. You're the first. My dog in heaven, Shady's the eighth. I am the 21st. And then when, when's Croom? When's Crooms? Crooms the either the 18th. Is the 18th. 18th. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the 8th. Yeah. So it probably is why we get along because Libras are about balance and we're all, you know, we all try to seek common ground and we seek to find a balance. We're, we're the peacekeepers, so to speak. So Exactly. For sure, exactly. Yeah. And, so. Yeah. So then Libras keep you pretty much. It's a key hard on my birthday was just on Sunday and my dad be over this bus. So we always, uh, we were uh, I'm always in the Libra household, I guess, so to say. And and the Libra Libra has the balance, but I also consider it the lion too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that out there. And I know Leos are lions, but sure. but I'm gonna give I'm gonna give us the lion. I think I think we deserve that, Adonis. <laughs> no doubt, I hear you 100 on that one. I'm gonna agree with you more than that. For sure, I think we should have a little more than a scale or something. We should have two lions on a scale or something like that. Yeah, and we and Kroom just said, see, that's why he's my guy. He was right. So I guess see, so it is. It's it's. <laughs> It's Libra season. It's Libra season for all of us, twenty four seven. That's how it is. So before I let you go, this has nothing to do with football, but nor does Libra season. But I have to say this because I've said this to you before, but I don't think I've ever said it on the air. And it was funny because last night I'm I'm driving to the airport. I was down covering ACC operation basketball, and I'm driving to the airport and I'm doing my thing. And uh, and on my way to the airport, my uh, one of my God has a has a funny way of reaching out to me in a lot of different ways. And one of those ways is mu- is musically, lyrically. So uh, Mace was one of my favorite, favorite, favorite rappers growing up. And so Feel So Good came on. And I believe I told you this when you were sitting in my car before, but I was like the closest person, in my opinion, that is a friend of mine that looks like Mace is you. So to me, I have Adonis, but then I have an extension of Mace as well. So. <laughs> I wish I was lyrically as gifted as Macy is. I am definitely musically literate. So I'm really <laughs> yeah, yeah, I appreciate that for sure. <laughs> Macy's my guy too. So I hear you. I hundred percent that one as well. Yeah, it was, it's funny. Be, yeah, you know, I was like, I still remember being in uh, elementary school. My teachers were awesome in Our Lady of Pompeii and in Syracuse. And, and when we were waiting for the bus, they would turn on the karaoke thing and they would play the music and they would let me play, you know, obviously the clean version, but they, they let me play the song. And whenever he would say, is it, is it because I move as smooth as Bugsy? They, I used to do the shoulder shrug. And they used to all like the the class would stand around me and be like, so that was my thing, the shoulder shrug. So I am all right, about right, Mace, hey. all about Mace. Yeah, you definitely told me this before for sure. Yeah, so I I do, and you know what? He needs to come out with something new, Adonis. I've been waiting too long. Man, me too. I, I, I think welcome back is probably one of his last songs. That's him. Yeah, welcome, welcome back. Breathe, stretch, shake. You know all those songs. I mean, I still remember. I still remember the lines because I lyrically go back to these lines. When it's a, if we, if she got with you and she already had a man, why wouldn't she cheat on you? I'll never forget that by 112. So yeah, w- right. with him, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not just like it was good music. Like I can go back to songs from 15 years ago and go, well, this happened. So, you know, right, right. Mate. Sure though, man. Uh, so I think he's doing some reverence. Isn't he like a reverend now? If I'm not mistaken. He was a reverend down in Florida. I don't know if he, he still right. is. Yeah. They're still doing it. okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. Yeah, I've definitely heard people tell you about that for sure. I started laughing at you talking about this story. I figured that's what it's going to be. 
Yeah, I wonder, yeah, so it says, let's see here. So he was a pastor all the way up until, until 2014, and then it says Mace regrets being a pastor. So I don't know, I don't know what he's doing now. Oh, no. Yeah, he, he's got he's got to come out and do so now it says to re-emerge at world changes church what does this say so an international radical revolution conference so yeah so i guess he's still involved with pastor stuff but maybe not i just i just want i just i mean i do i want i want another album from mace i'm 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 greedy i need another <laughs> i need another one so or maybe at least a we need, yeah, we need to reach out. Is that what you said? Reach out to him. All right, I think we lost it for a second. Adonis, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay, we lost you. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to make you repeat it one more time. But what did you say? I was saying, uh, maybe we can bring him out of hibernation or something, or you have a reunion, like reunion tour or something like that. Yeah, I know that they did for, you know, it was within the last couple of years, I think it was for New Year's, they, him and Diddy came out and and they did Feel So Good and then I think they did More Money, More Problems or something like that. And I remember I remember getting in touch with my buddy James because he was the one, him and I always listened. He was Diddy, I was Mace. Like that's how every every song he took one, I took the other. But I, I look back right. on that and I'm like, More Money, More Problems. My mom knows that because she used to play it. See, I had it when they had... When you bought a single by buying a cassette tape, and the cassette tape had the instrumental on one side, and then it had the song on the other. Yeah, no doubt. I, sure, <laughs> I go Damn. back. I go back that far, Adonis. That's how far back I go. But, <laughs> but with that being, <laughs> but that being said, we spoke about music. We spoke about so many different things. Law enforcement. What he's up to now. Football. It, it, you know, th- this world continues to open up, and there's so many things to discuss so i know it's been a bit adonis but i'm gonna have to have you come back on here uh, very soon and and try and uh you try and expand on this story and expand on the running back core and whatnot so i look forward to the opportunity and i look forward to having you back of course for sure Dan. It's definitely always good to reconnect oh, and uh anytime you want to have, have you on the show just give me a pretty free through the week so uh definitely reach out and we'll talk, we can talk any of we just want to talk. Let's start off. I appreciate you following me and getting me on the show and talking to the uh, homeless community. Go home. Got a big one tomorrow. Um, I'm glad that they're doing it. That the first day is going to the He's trying to keep around there. So uh, definitely look forward to that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I look forward to talking with you soon. So God bless as always. And be good, all right? All right, Dad. Take care. Take care, man. That coming from Adonis and mean more, and it was funny because we were on we were on that line with Adonis for thirty four minutes. And what number did Adonis wear when he was at Syracuse? Thirty four. And what scene am I on here as I rotate through here? Thirty four. So it's funny how life just sends mess. It's funny how I shouldn't say life. It's funny how God sends messages. Always finds a way. And through numbers, he speaks to me a lot.